So I thought I'd do a video on the perils of uh, deadlocking when you're doing threaded code. And I'm going to use uh, C++ to do it. I'm going to use their standard threading library. So I've set up um, a little program here. Uh, what I've done um, in the main method there, this is just a, this move console window is just a bit of code to get the console on screen. But I've just created two threads that call two different functions. One's called increment cats and dogs, and the other one's called increment dogs and cats. Uh, they currently don't do anything. Uh, and then I wait for those two threads to exit by calling join. And then I just print out these value of dogs and cats. So I've just got two global variables, one called cats, one called dogs, set to zero. And currently I don't do anything with them. So if I run this, all it really does is it starts two threads, which do nothing. Both threads end, then we print out the two values of cats and dogs, and then we exit. So if I run this now, you should see that. So there we go. So I've just printed out dogs and cats. So this program didn't really do anything. Let's just check that. Um, I'll just print out inside these functions. Let's just check that they're actually being called. Um, I'll just check that's being called and check that's being called. So we should see those two printing out. I don't know in what order they'll print out. And then we should see dogs and cats printed at the end. Let's just check that. Oh, should have put some uh, should have put some line breaks on that. Let's put a line break on the end. Line break and line break. So there we go. We got increment cats and dogs. Then we got increment dogs and cats, and then we printed out nothing. So that's all fine. Um, so what will generally happen if you're working in a program is you'll have lots of threads running, and They'll be doing stuff, and you'll generally find that there's there's some resources or something that that you're going to want to protect from two threads accessing at the same time. So it might be that you have you know like cats gets incremented on this thread and dogs gets incremented on this one or something like that, which is all perfectly fine. Um, but you you know the program might be large and you don't know that dogs isn't being accessed on both threads. In fact, let's do that. So we're going to increment cats and dogs. So we'll just add one to cats, add one to dogs, and this one's going to add one to dogs and add one to cats. It doesn't really matter what they're doing. I'm just pointing out that these two threads are just different. They're doing different things, but they're working on the same resources. So I've run that. Should be seeing a value of two cats, two dogs, I think. Yeah, two cats, two dogs, because each thread incremented it once. So quite often, uh, like this program is totally trivial, but quite often you'll want to protect these resources with um, a mutex. So I can do that with standard mutex, I think. Is it standard mutex? So let's have a cat's mutex. And we'll also have a dog's mutex. So you use these mutexes just to protect particular parts of the program. So in this case, uh, cat's mutex, we need to lock the cat's mutex when we're using it. And we're also using dogs, so we're going to lock the dogs mutex because we're using that. And then we do our work, uh, and then we need to unlock. So let's just call the same thing. There is things in the standard library to help you with this um, to automatically unlock, but I'm just going to call unlock anyway. So now um, I've basically taken the locks that, that protect cats and protect dogs, but I'm taking them both at the same time. And then I've done my work and then I've unlocked them, which is all totally fine. And I'm going to do the same thing in the other one. Now this one is like slightly different. This one is going to do, it's going to lock dogs, then it's going to lock cats. And we can unlock these again at the end. So now I've got the basically the same program, um, except I'm protecting cats and dogs from being worked on at the same time. So I can't operate on cats and dogs at the same time. So the important part here is that um, the the way deadlocks occur is when um, generally when you have two threads and one thread is waiting for the other thread and that thread's waiting so for the other thread. So A is waiting for B and B is waiting for A and nobody progresses. Um, and this, I can honestly say that in, in practice, I've only seen this happen when you have multiple mutexes. And I, I'm pretty sure this is the only way to get it to happen, like multiple resources that have to be locked. Um, uh, and this is, I think, the only way I've ever seen it happen 
is that you have multiple mutexes. It can be two or more, and they are taken in different orders on on each machine or on each processor in each thread. So you can see here that we're locking cats, then locking dogs, and this one is locking dogs, then it's locking cats. So the weird thing is though, is and this is the problem with deadlocks, is that when you run this, I think this is gonna work fine. We'll just see. Yeah, there you go. So we didn't create a deadlock by doing that. So, you know, it's, it's all working completely fine. Everything's okay. Yeah, I can run that loads of times. No problem. So you could write that code thinking that's perfectly valid code. And I think this is one of the problems with deadlocking is that you can write code like this and it now has the potential to deadlock, but it doesn't always deadlock. Because for it to actually deadlock, what's got to actually happen is that this this line of code, this locking the cat's mutex, and then this line of code locking the dog's mutex in this other thread have to kind of happen at both the same time. Because if they happen at the same time, then the next line is, well, this guy wants to lock cats and this guy wants to lock dogs. But they both end up just waiting for each other because the other thread's got the lock. Nobody gives it up. And then it's all a complete pain. So as it stands here, yeah, this is working completely fine. So let's let's actually try and make this deadlock. So what I'm going to do, let's just increment while dogs is less than like that's that hundred thousand. So this thread's going to keep locking cats and dogs till dogs gets to hundred thousand, and we're going to do the same thing in this other thread down here. So now they're, they're doing, they're basically both these threads are going to run this code, you know, 100,000 times. This one's going to run it 100,000 times. We should get dogs and cats, you know, roughly to 100,000, but it might go over. But let's just see how that works. Let's see if that runs. Now, again, not can't guarantee that this will deadlock, but let's just see. Oh, there you go. So instantly the program has now not finished. So it didn't get to the end. Now, I think what's happened is we don't know how many times we went round these dogs things and these incrementing dogs and cats, but we went round so, sometimes and then we got to that state where I said where each thread got locked waiting for the other one. So now both of them can't progress. And weirdly, we technically deadlocked with the main thread as well because this main thread here um, is sitting here waiting for these other two threads to finish. So technically we locked up three threads and that's why the program isn't finishing. So that's pretty much the only way you're going to be able to deadlock something is by getting two mutexes or two resources that you have to lock and that have to wait and doing them in opposite orders on different threads. So it's, it's really bad. And this is one of the ways to recognize it is like my program isn't progressing for some reason. Now, this can be a bit weird because sometimes the main thread, like if you've got some graphics drawing or something, can actually progress. So you might see things carrying on, but two background threads um, can just get deadlocked and they stop and maybe something isn't happening and you might not notice it. And now if you've got lots of background threads, like you've got 10 and two of them are deadlocked, you'll still have the other eight working um, and these other two won't be progressing. So you might find that there's something's gone missing or there's a piece of information that went missing. So it can behave very strangely in your program. It can behave like this is a lockup or um, it can almost be unnoticeable, but either way, in this case, it's been like really bad for the program because it just hasn't progressed. And if you've got something like an online game and you've got something like a crash reporter in there, well, you're not going to get a crash report from this because it hasn't crashed. It's sitting there and it's going to run forever. So these kind of problems are um, a bit of a pain. But the first thing you want to do is if, if you're encountering these during development, um, and you, you really need to be able to attack. You've got to find out what these like mutexes are or whatever it is that's causing your lock. So what you want to do is you see this lock like this. You want to get the debugger attached. Mine's already attached here. So I'll just go out of full screen mode. Mine's already attached to this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pause the program right now. And I'm going to take a look at what the threads are doing. So I've got my threads tab down there. I don't know if you can see that, the text is very small, but threads is very small down there, but I've got my, you can see my three threads um, are running down here. So the first thing to do is you're gonna have to stop the program, 
take a look at what all the threads are doing. Um, and as you can see here, I've got three threads going up, my main thread, and I've got these two threads that I started. So if we take a look in there, uh, we can see that um, it's on the, it's just stopped on the line after. So this one's waiting on the cat's mutex. Uh, we look at the other one. This one's waiting on dog's mutex. So that's exactly what I said was gonna happen is one's waiting on cats, one's waiting on dogs. Um, and the main thread is waiting on this join. So um, the problem here is to actually like find out which locks are causing you the trouble. You kind of have to go in the code, find out. You'll you'll see where the where it's um, where the code is stopped. You should see immediately above, like okay, this is one of the mutexes that's involved um, in this in this problem. So I know that dog mutex is causing a problem here. Um, and if I can find the other thread, then maybe I can work out from the other thread that oh, it's cat's mutex. So I know that dogs and cat's mutex are the ones that are being taken like in these opposite orders that's causing this problem. You might have to like look higher up the call stack. That's the other way of doing it is you go in here and you go, okay, dogs is the problem. Um, but this cat's mutex, this might be a really big call stack and the cat's mutex could have been taken like way, way, way up the call stack. So you might have to keep going searching up the call stack to see where's this other mutex that's possibly involved in this problem. And, and uh, at that point, once you know what the two mutexes involved are, then you've got to decide, right, well, how do I get myself um, out of this situation? And that's basically what we can see now. So there's only a few things you can really do here. So I've, I've got to stop this program now because it's not going to progress. So there's a couple of ways to solve this. Um, well, the first, the easiest way is, well, just don't use locks. So um, I've got a video on Atomics. So this, this trivial program I'm doing here can be written with you can use um, atomic variables, so you don't need the locks at all. So that would be like a lock-free programming. So if you if you if your thing is trivial enough to be converted to something that's lock-free, then you should try and do that. But keep in mind that lock-free programming isn't very easy, and isn't necessarily faster, and it also might mean like rewriting your program. And it's also possible that you can't do that because these mutex might be protecting something way more complicated than just incrementing a variable. So the first option. And the best one is probably just to get rid of the locks because then you're not going to deadlock. Um, the second option would be um, to uh, take the first, well, this again assumes that you've got this like trivial program where you you know what these two locks are. The first lock you can just take, but the second one you can try and take it. Now, and if you can't try, if you can't get the second lock, then you have to release both locks, undo anything you did, and then come back later and try again. So that can be done here with, I think there is a try lock in the, there you go. So I can attempt to lock the second one. Uh, and then you find out if that was actually successful. So if I, uh, I'm going to reverse the order of that. So here, what I do is I take the first lock and then I attempt the second lock. If I get it, I do my work, I unlock and then I unlock. If I don't get it, then I'm going to, unlock my other mutex and then I'm going to go around and you can see this while loop will go around and then I'll try again. So I think that might even just solve it on its own, but I can do it on both threads. So I'll try lock the cat's mutex as well. So this will solve the problem is that is that when you get deadlocked, somebody has to give, someone's got to give up. Uh, and if that person doesn't give up, then nothing's going to progress. So the idea here is that at least one of these threads is going to say, well, I can't get this right now. So I need to release all my locks and then come back and try again. And I've got to release the other one as well. Otherwise the other thread still won't progress and I'll come back and the try lock will fail again. So I have to, so this is like one way of avoiding it. And again, this is a really trivial case where I've just put my two mutexes next to each other, but this other mutex might be in a much higher call stack in a different piece of code. There might have already been some code executed here that you that has already done some work so that can't really be undone so this is one way of doing it but keep in mind that it it can be quite hard to implement once your program gets very complicated but it does work that's all i'm trying to point out here is that this should work so if i run this now if i haven't got anything wrong um a second there it is so we actually went over our number slightly because of the way the 
that's some dodgy multi-threading code I've written. But basically, if I can run that and I can run it again, let's just run it again now. There you go. So it, it's not deadlocking now. Because if it detect if if we get to the point where that other lock can't be taken, then we are we are just giving up. We're giving up both locks. That's the important part, giving up both locks. And then we're trying again. So that's one way of solving your problem is to try and then, you know, if you can't get it, just come back and do it again, release all your locks. So that does work, but um, possibly a better way, I would say, um, is, let's undo this back to where we were with just the normal lock. So we're back in our deadlock situation. Undo, lots and lots of undo. So we're back in our deadlocking situation again here. Um, the other way of doing it is however many mutexes are involved here is you take them in a deterministic order. So that's the other way of solving your problem is that no, like you can see I've engineered this problem in that cats and dogs is being taken there and then dogs and cats is being taken there. So they're being taken in the opposite order. If you always took multiple mutexes in a deterministic order, deterministic meaning that both threads will always take them in the same order, then you're not going to get this problem. So this, this solution is actually a lot easier, is that um, even though this is like incrementing cats and then incrementing dogs, and this one's incrementing dogs and incrementing cats, uh, I can see that I need to take two mutexes, but I'm always going to take them. Uh, so let's say I'll take them in alphabetical order. So C and then D, so I'll take cats and then dogs. And in this one, I'll take cats and then dogs. And you can see it doesn't really matter what order I release them in down here. So I'm going to take cats and dogs on there, and then cats and dogs on that one. And you can see that this will stop the this will stop the deadlock because this what this what guy will take cats. And if this guy comes in here, this guy will have to stop even on the first mutex. And then this guy will take dogs, and he'll be able to do that because this guy hasn't taken it. We'll do our work. We'll unlock, and then this other thread gets a chance to do what it wants to do. So deterministic order is the other way of solving this problem. So you can see that's actually a much, probably a much better solution because then what this means is that if the first mutex can't be taken, then just don't do anything because if there was some work done here, then you, then you don't have to undo that work because you're gonna know that I'm not gonna start doing anything unless all the work can be done. So it means that, you know, you might lock a bit more, but actually this works. So that's the way that you have for actually solving this problem. but uh, again, I have to be aware that in a real world situation, it's never actually this simple. The co this code is just sitting here right next to each other and it's perfectly plain to see it. But you'll, the chances are that if you end up with a situation where you are deadlocked, um, th these two mutexes are just completely unrelated in two separate code bases. And somehow these other, you know, these two threads have become locked and you just didn't know how. And it, like I said, it can also be quite hard to recognize and to pick up in a live environment, like what's really happening here? Why have, why have some of my resources not progressing as fast as they should? Um, so as far as I know, I think they're the, they're the only ways you've got of like really solving this problem is get rid of the locks, do try locks and release all the locks or take locks in a deterministic order. The deterministic order is probably one of the better ones of doing it, but again, it relies on knowing that you're going to take two and if these two, like I said, if these two pieces of code are in different sections of the program, maybe this is this part's in a section that you didn't even write, and this part's in your section, then you've just got to somehow work it out. So these these can be tricky to actually work out in the real world, but um, but in reality, the solution's trivial, but but practically it ends up not being trivial. So I hope that explains like what deadlocking is how you can avoid it and then how you correct it once you've found it and then obviously how you find it in the debugger and you know so that thing i did in the debugger as well looking at the threads you can spend like you know half an hour looking through the threads trying to find out what's going on sometimes so you have to be really careful and um, make sure that you've, you've actually found out what those two locks are and keep in mind also it can all it can be more than two locks it could be three or four or more so i hope that explains uh, everything from like a real world perspective, even though the example is totally trivial. Um, and now you know what deadlocking is and why you never want to see that in your program.